My guys, why does it feel like it's been a while since I've pulled on a video? I don't know. I feel like it maybe it's because I keep tilting and I just keep pulling off stream or off video and uh, it's a perpetual vicious cycle. But anyway, we are now finally on a unit that I'm not like, you know, super diehard for. And so for this banner, I am happy to go for a 10 pull. All right. And so I'm going to do singles. Let's go. Number one. Da -da -da -da. Let's just hit the fun. <laughs> We're never that lucky. We're never that lucky to hit the fiver on the first one, but it's all right, you know, it's all right. That's um, that's that's demanding a lot of luck. So tiny one on number two, we're gonna go number three over here. So guys, as you can see, I've finally, finally started to build up my stash. I do have like 10K jemmies, well, 9K now. But for the last two or three months, I've been sitting at zero and it feels good to finally actually have like some kind of stash, right? Because I don't know about you guys, but like being perpetually broke, it's, it's really not a good feeling. It just makes me not really want to play the game, you know what I'm saying? And so that will be Chainsaw Rick on number four or five or something, but it looks like we won't be lucking out on this one. So that's all good. <laughs> it's a, uh, uh, such is life. Such is life. All right, we should be nearing that five star very, very soon. So uh, I've, I've lost count. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is probably number six, maybe. Another blue, this is, um, this, this luck isn't really it, but you know, I gotta remain optimistic. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll get a heady. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I will get a heady. Surely this is like number eight or something. I feel like we've actually already gone pretty deep. Uh, da ding. All right, there is our guaranteed five star. And let's see what we get. Maybe we'll get the new five star. So that'll be nice. Uh, that is Umbratron. That's a Korax. Okay, somehow that actually was a new five star. It was, wow, I, I did not know I did not have Korax. And so on that note, with our low stakes pulling, we managed to get a Korax. We didn't get Cordy. Um, <laughs> I have a lot to say about this, but all is well. This video will not be a tilter. And so with that being said, hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're gonna to be talking about the event. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they do it, man. I don't know how they just keep innovating and innovating and innovating because like this is just always something, something different. It's like Tour Dog are on a mission to be like, all right, we're going to make 12 new types of events this year, one for each month, and then we're going to rotate through them for the next like five years. And to be honest, I really wouldn't be able to fault them for that because that's freaking crazy. Anyway, let me pull it back a bit. So today I want to have a look at Hedy, uh, the furries, as well as the... I think it's a child. I do want to talk about them briefly. I also do want to talk about the event briefly, just on how easy it is to finish this guy. And then on top of that, I do want to have a quick chat about the secret territory. Uh, it's, um, it's a compromise, let's put it that way. And so speaking of the secret territory, you know what, let's start off with that. So let me hop over to uh, explore. And so if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, secret territory has a sweet function added to it in which we can actually skip stages now. And so welcome to the secret territory. I'm going for the question marks and I want this double attack over here. So I'm gonna click this and hopefully the sweet button is gonna come up right here. And so as you can see, auto exploration, it actually costs five of these, I think it's called MS. It actually costs five MS to skip one stage and like each of these levels are probably about like five stages maybe six stages long and then so six stages over five levels that's about like 30 of these stages and then 30 multiplied by like five of these MS's um I keep clicking it sorry that's that's quite a lot that's like 150 MS and then don't forget that the MS actually does translate into these like fragments the text frags I think they're called and so are all of those text fragments worth giving up honestly that's a question that only you can answer and well for me it's it's not really worth it. Me personally, I actually really do like the stuff that is offered in the store, all of these friendship gifts. And I am on the long quest of trying to max out all of my different characters. And so if you ask me and like what my thoughts are on this sweet function, I would say that it's 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 really steep, unfortunately. I think the implementation is okay. I just think like the five cost per stage is quite a lot. Like generally speaking, to clear one of these guys over here, it normally takes about two turns, including like your preemptive plus all of your converters into like an Aurora time. And then you Aurora time, kill like half the mobs and then kill the rest in the next turn. So yeah, I'm just finding this five cost a little bit too steep. If it was three, I'd, I think I would do it. But yeah, five, I am still going to manual. I am still going to clear out the secret store. However, it is a great option actually for all of the people who don't care about it, because I do know that there are a lot of people who just don't do secret territory anymore. And so to them, it's only gains. And if you are that type of person, then congratulations. Anyway, all in all, I'm very, very neutral about this. It's like, 
it's nice. It's it's a cool one to a dog, but unfortunately it's not enticing enough for me to use it. All right, now let's talk about the three different characters that came out today. So we've got Hetty, we got Cordy and ah, where are my furry bros? Okay, that's odd, whatever. All right, let's have a look at Hetty first. Okay, well, this, this Ascension 4 art is actually really freaking cool. Sorry, Ascension 2. Is, is is it Ascension 2? Oh my god, I'm getting revived, which mixed up with this one. All right, so let me quickly click into the Aurorian info and give a pretty fast evaluation on all of these. So we've got Hedy. She is a Forest Thunder, and her active skill is essentially Green Carleen. And for you guys who don't know what Carleen does, essentially she teleports to a location and then converts that entire column to her natural color. It does look like Hedy does the same thing 250% to one column and knocks enemies back and then converts all of those tiles. And then on top of that, we've got the preemptive three cooldowns, I believe on zero BT, zero breakthrough, it is on a four turn cooldown with no preemptive. Personally, I actually really like this archetype. It's just that four turn CD at zero BT, it's, it's really hard to work around. But if you do manage to get like a breakthrough to make it three round cooldown or the preemptive strike, which is max breakthrough, which is quite steep, then I reckon these are top tier units absolutely undisputed anyway moving through so we've just got a chain combo um uh, this one is it's actually very similar to carleen's i think and then we've got the equipment in which we use pompey's attack for some of the stuff essentially she does a lot of damage i think that's really it in a nutshell so if you guys don't have carleen like carleen doesn't do overly much damage that's the best way that i can describe her however looking at hetty's skills and that Pompeii passive, I think she is actually gonna be quite strong. Okay, so let's do this. So it looks like there is a lightning tile trigger bolt thing over here. So let's teleport on it and then convert this entire column green. So as you can see, ding, 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 ding. and then he also gets stunned. Oh, ouch. All right, and so let's get into Aurora time to see how all of this plays out because like, I think it's gonna be again, like rather strong. So let's have a look at the autos, 5K. Uh, that's pretty standard for like a converter, but yeah, that. <laughs> oh my god. That is a lot more damage than Carleen could ever possibly do. That, that that was actually so much damage. What the frick? All right, so let me try to finish this round off and see. Okay, let's have a look at the chain combo. 4k and then... Dude, what, what the frick? She does so much damage. She is most certainly like a... How do I say it? Um, If you guys know the Victoria, Victoria is a support but she does like detonate a level damage. I really feel like Hedy is that kind of archetype where she is doing an absurd amount of damage, even not being a detonator. And so let's just finish this off. And I just want to see that again. Like it's, it's a bit nutty, like how hard she hits. All right, let's go down, let's go around and let's end over here, something like that. So it's like her auto, her auto attacks, they do okay damage, but uh, what the frick? I'm going to need to slow-mo that at some point to see like exactly how much damage she does because it actually feels a little bit low-key ridiculous. I, like even my detonators, my green detonators, I don't think they do that much damage. So 3k, 3.7k, 4.3, and then let's hit the end and we're going to see... Jeez, that's like 40, 48k damage. That's 48k damage. What in the world? All right, maybe... <laughs> Maybe I do go to pity for Hetty. I mean, she kind of cute, right guys? <laughs> oh no, we are not doing this. All right guys, just one temple just one temple. I swear I am not going to go broke again. So my dudes, give me the big prey, give me the big luck, and let's see if we can hit anything on a tenor. Please, please don't be a freaking purple bag. Yeah. That looks like it's going to be a, um, a five star. Okay, we got one five star. It is going to be the new character, I believe. And it looks like we do get Cordy and we are going to stop there. We are going to stop right there. There is no more rolling going on in this video. Well, good thing I got Cordy since I am about to test her next. So <laughs> I wonder if she is going to be like just as busted as Hetty. As strong as Carleen is, she is nowhere near as what like Hetty's numbers were. That 48k damage, I don't think like Carleen will ever hit those heights. All right, and so let's have a quick look at Cordy. Um, that is a uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy around her character, around her art. 
around her design. I think, oh, well, at least the sprite's really cute. All right, and so here we are. Cordy is a fire detonator, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so she is definitely fire. And then just looking at her chain combo, it does look like she is a detonator as well. And so as a five star, she who would she compete with? I see a stun, but like the only other person that's fire that has a stun would be Barbara. And I don't think she's able to put out that much damage. So let's have a quick look. Deals 200% damage to one enemy within one surrounding cluster. And then you can also stun the same target twice. So that seems pretty cool. So the interesting thing about this one is that it is on a one round cooldown. So wow, that's um okay. Let's let's try it out. Let's do a quick loop around everybody and let's see how her chain combo plays out. It is gonna be a cross, I believe, and mm, is okay. It's okay, I guess. But let's hit them with the active skill. Okay, that's um that is, uh, that is a tiny, tiny, tiny active skill range. I didn't realize that it was within like one surrounding cluster. It's not every day that we see a skill like this. All right, so it looks like it's asking me to choose a tile. I guess I'll choose that one. And it stuns an enemy. Okay. Okay. So I don't think this archetype actually exists yet because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, she's like Barbara or like, oh, she's like Benny and Kuro because it's like a five-star detonator. But really, like, name another Aurorian that is able to on-demand stun, like, within one turn. I don't think that actually exists yet, so I would say that there could be a niche here. <sighs> mm, she does feel a bit weak. Like, you guys saw me dunk on those monsters when I was using Hetty, but she... Cordy, Cordy doesn't feel like she's doing too much damage. All right, so I'm gonna just finish this mob off. And so let's go into the next round and I'm gonna go stun another one. Let's hit that over here. Let's stun this boy here and 7.5K and it only hits one tile. I actually don't know about calling Cordy a, uh, a detonator. Maybe she's not a detonator and I need to go check that fact out. But like, yeah, that she's feeling much more like a support right now. She's... She's not really putting out the damage that I'm expecting her to do. But that stun, like, I think we've seen a lot of content where stuns are actually useful after me, like, trash talking it for a couple of months. And the fact that it keeps coming off of cooldown in one turn, that's... That's actually... It's actually quite strong. Let's, let's do this one more time before we end the battle, but... Mm, I'm... I'm not impressed. Let's, let's put it that way, like... Yeah. All right, so we are in Cordy's profile. It does say detonator. I suspect her stats are going to be like a detonator, but like, I, I mean, I guess her chain combo is also like a detonator. Like it's going from the one surrounding cluster to a diamond to a, a radial. That, yeah, that certainly sounds like it. But as for the active skill, like the stuns and stuff, Honestly, I would really classify Cordy more as a support. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Maybe it's just that she has detonator stats. So I'm talking about like 3k attack at uh, Ascension 3. Anyway, so just from that Aurorian trial, yeah, I, I'm not really like sold on Cordy. However, I am actually incredibly sold on Hetty, but I... <laughs> I am not going broke again, guys. I am not going broke for this. Like, as much as I want to go broke, I don't know. Maybe I'll go another tenner. Because again, her archetype is actually really freaking cool. And who in the heck can actually pull out like 48k damage across four cells aside from an actual detonator? Yeah, for some reason, Hetty seems really, really freaking overtuned and Cordy seems a little bit undertuned. And so, my guys, that leaves us with the furry bros, Hachi and Jin. So on first impressions, I see four star, I see sniper, I see thunder, I immediately think of Kafka. But when I do look at the skills, it doesn't really seem to actually play out like Kafka. And so whilst they do have a couple of similarities, like looking at the active skill over here, like he's throwing a grenade and it bounces, I think Hachi and Jin's active skill is actually like a sniper skill. It's not to say that Kafka's is not, but yeah, I, I really think that this is a different archetype as well. Unfortunately, it looks like I won't have the opportunity to play test them. Uh, we're just running out of time today. But just looking at these numbers and like seeing what this actually does, this grenade can bounce again to the farthest distance possible in Jin's selected direction. And then it also deals 200% damage to enemies it passes along the way. Like, this seems pretty freaking good. Does it replace or power creep Kafka? I can't say right now because unfortunately I just have not had a chance to actually actually go through it. And so maybe we will cover that in another video, but with that being said, let's head on over to our last piece of content, which is the new event itself, Aurora Eterna. All right, so I've got a lot of praise for this guy because uh, 
This is actually quite interesting, right? And so the first thing I do want to talk about is this guy over here, which is the data disk system. Uh, so I, what did I click into? The command archives test version. So this is probably the most important part of the event because as you can see here, creating data disk time remaining. Across this entire event, we're going to have, I believe, 17 days to clear out all of these. And so 17 days will equate to about, I believe it was about 400 hours or so. And so if these disks take, I think they take seven hours to reload, we can do 400 hours divided by seven and that leaves us with 58 discs. What this means is that if you don't let this guy cap out over here, which you shouldn't, you're gonna have to clear 58 of these guys over here. And so if I click into one of these guys, you're gonna see there are three difficulties, easy, normal, hard, and as you can see, they are giving a different amount of renown. Now, I believe somebody on Discord has done the calculations for this. If you do 58 discs on normal, you'll be able to clear out the entire event shop. I believe you can even miss a couple of days and honestly, I actually really like this system. Not only this one, but also the last one, I think the one where you're fighting the other whole team. We didn't actually have to finish like all of the heavyweights to be able to earn all of the rewards. And so that same philosophy does apply over here where we can do normal every single day and clear out like all of these 58 of these guys and be able to get all of the rewards. So I believe this guy comes down to 2000 points. So yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, do they have the, um, this guy? Okay, they do. They do have one star crest. That is, uh, that is quite a lot of jammies as well. You know what? Maybe, maybe I'll consider doing another temple. But anyway, that's the mechanics of the events. I, I want to talk about these guys themselves because it, it's, it's so interesting. These are essentially like micro events. So standard combat simulation, standard combat simulation. But before I actually had a couple of different ones, I had one which was like, oh, I have to like weave around to get to those big summony mobs. And then I had another one in which I just had to run for like six rounds. And so it's kind of, it's not really roguelike, but it's kind of like small little discrete events that are changing every single day or even every single time you pull one of these discs. I think that this is quite a smart way to do it. This is, again, it's not something that we've done before. Although some could argue that it's kind of just like repackaging the same stuff, but just delivering it in a different way. But for me personally, it's really nice because it feels like it's not monotonous. Them designing these kinds of systems actually does make it feel like every single event is different. All right, so aside from that, I think everything is still pretty straightforward. Main story, don't forget to do your main stories. As always, it's zero cost. Very, very nice to a dog. And then I believe that's kind of it. I don't think there's too much left for this. I believe Aurora Eterna takes us all the way to the end of December, if I'm not wrong. And so welcome to what is possibly the last event for Alchemy Stars for 2021. And of course, that brings us to the end of the video and you guys already know what time it is. Are you guys liking this event? Because I am quite liking this event. Like, look at the whole vibe. The story, I haven't played through, but like, I've seen the PV, I've seen the whole vibe, and it's... Oh man, these guys really know. They really know how to make immersive stories. Anyway, my dudes, let me know if you guys are enjoying the event itself, and if you guys do end up pulling on Heady, let me know how you guys did. And if you were so kind as to drop a comment down into the comments below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video, then please consider a like. And if you do, I don't know, like me a little bit, then do please consider a subscribe as well if you have not done so already. But otherwise, honestly, I am starting to get tempted to pull on this Heady banner. But as Heady once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. All right, my guys, I ended up doing another 10 pull. Freaking hell, I always get baited. But in this 10 pull, I did notice that there is going to be a six star. And so let's go through it together. All right, so first up, we've got an Amy. Next, we are going to have a Chainsaw Rick. Come on, please be heady. Please be heady. It looks like we have a Korgon. And for all those people who are like, we don't even have fairies in the game. Look at Korgon. Look at him. Tell me what he is, right? <laughs> Tell me what he is. All right, moving on, Korgon. Uh, what is that one? <laughs> oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Sork and Bear, come on, get us up to that six star. I want to see it. Jomu, is it like number five or something? We're taking a, we're taking a while. We got Alice. All right, here we go. Here we go. Big prey, big prey, big prey. That looks like. Ooh, woo! Let's freaking go, my guys. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. Oh man. Oh, I feel great. I feel so freaking good. And so if you guys did big pray for me, then thank you guys so much. And so with this, this is the true end to the video. Secret ending. Bye-bye.